Hi and welcome back to Sansamed. In the following videos we're gonna start our discussions about T lymphocytes. We're gonna discuss about their general features, their origin, their maturation, their role in the thymus, types, subtypes with their respective functions. But in this video we're gonna mainly focus about the general information about them uh, as well as their origin. Let's start with their origin. Your T lymphocytes are originated from your primary lymphoid tissue, essentially your bone marrow and your thymus. In this part we're going to talk about the bone marrow, especially the red bone marrow which are the active site of production. And remember, the only red bone marrow you still have left as an adult is your vertebrae, scapula, ribs, sternum, pelvis, and skull bones, and the proximal portions of your humerus and femur. The red bone marrow has in its surrounding as well some stromal cells, which means supporting cells, including fibroblasts, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, some macrophages, and etc. And when there is a need of T lymphocytes, these stromal cells start to secrete a cytokine called interleukin-7. The function of this interleukin-7 is to stimulate the parenchymal cells, which are your hematopoietic stem cells, to make an extra copy of themselves first and differentiate them into the common lymphoid progenitor lineage which would then, through the help of either cytokines, to differentiate into small lymphocyte lineage and natural killer cell lineage. The one that will be needed right now will be the small lymphocyte lineage, which has two portions, the B cells and T cells. But then you also have your secondary lymphoid organs, as you remember, with the function of exposing different types of antigens to your lymphocyte. The secondary lymphoid organs include mucous associated lymphoid tissue, Peyer's patches of your uh, small intestine, your spleen, your lymph nodes, your tonsils, and some others. As you remember, your immunity had two major types, innate and adaptive. T cells are part of your adaptive immunity, but then again, your adaptive immunity has two subtypes, humoral immunity and cell-mediated immunity. Your humoral uh, immunity will essentially refer to your plasma complement uh, proteins and your antibodies. While the other uh, subtype, the cell mediated immunity, is essentially as the name suggests. It's just cells, such as T cell and phagocytes. Let's talk about the amount of T cells you find here. Your total white blood cell count is between 4,500 and 11,000 per microliter. Uh, you can just compare the, this low level to amount of red blood cells, which are around 5 million per microliter. But at the same time, which one do you think is produced more? Actually, your white blood cells. This is due to their shorter lifespan. The most common of your total white blood cells are your neutrophils, abbreviated PMN, standing for polymorph nuclear neutrophils. The second most common will be your lymphocyte third most, your monocyte macrophages, then followed by your eosinophils, and the least common is the basophil. Your lymphocytes are around 20 to 30%, whereas the most common will be your T cells, that are 70% uh, of them. Then you have three subtypes of T cells. Cytotoxic T cell, that are also called the CD8 cells, your T helper cells, that are also known as CD4 cells, and your regulatory T cells. The most common of these is, of course, the T helper cell, and there is usually 2 to 1 ratio between your CD4s and CD8s. So, where are your T cells located? They are located essentially in three major tissues. In the beginning, you find a lot of them in your thymus, but later on, you will find them primarily in two areas. One of the areas where you will usually find the T cells is PALS, standing for periarterial lymphoid sheet. This is an area that surrounds the central artery. Another area where you usually find uh, T cells will be in your lymph nodes. Close to the lim your lymphoid follicles, there will be an area called paracortical zone. In this area, you will also find lots of T cells. You remember that one of the major differences between your innate and adaptive system 
was memory. The adaptive system had long, uh, long term memory, whereas the uh, innate system did not have a memory. This is essentially due to that in the adaptive system, once you have been exposed to some uh, microbe or pathogen, your lymphocytes, after uh, fighting off this pathogenic agent, they will make a copy of themselves that is specific to this type of pathogen. So in the future exposure, they will be more prepared. One good example of this can be chickenpox. Chickenpox uh, is due to a virus called the varicella virus. And uh, with this virus, during the first exposure, your T-cells will fight it off and make a memory cell, essentially a copy of themselves. And in the future, you will not get the same signs and symptoms if you will get affected by the same virus because now your T-cells are prepared. They have already a specific copy that will fight off this virus. So what makes the T-cells so different from your other immune cells? One of the major differences is their T-cell receptor. And these T-cell receptors, they are very specific to different pathogens. But due to the a certain uh, limited amount of genes we have in our, in our body, which is around 20, 30,000 of them, we can only make a significant type of uh, T-cell receptor that will be specific to certain pathogens. But there are many more pathogens that we can imagine, and therefore our cells are quite clever. They make different types of T-cell receptors through a process called genetic rearrangement which would help them to make billions of different types of specific T-cell receptors. Most of the T-cell receptor, more, essentially more than 90%, are composed of two subunits, the alpha part and the beta part. There are other types of T-cells that have different types of T-cell receptor called delta and gamma, but we'll not uh, talk about them. In every T-cell, you also have something in common. You have a C a CD markers, CD stands for cluster of differentiation, that is called CD3. And these have also their subunits, which are epsilon, gamma, and delta. These will work essentially as a secondary messenger to stimulate the nucleus of the T cells to induce their function. In the next video, we're going to talk about the thymus.